Well, I want to develop my young rookie core for years to come. With Chase Young, you're giving up a draft pick and you're going to give up a chunk of money to go with that as well. And I've got no problems with that personally, but for me, it's much better for this team if our young guys develop and become studs themselves. We've seen what Houston can do. We've seen what Pascal can do. Now he's getting healthy. We know what Hutch can do. Them three under contract rookie for a long time, playing really well. I think that's just as good as having Chase here in the long term. So that's the only issue I have with it. If they were to go out and get him tomorrow and bring him in, I, you know, I wouldn't be sad about it. But just personally, I'd rather keep our guys and give them the snaps instead. Got a question here. If CJ Gardner John falls out this season, what would be the cost to keep him? It's going to be a boatload of money. We're talking top three safety money. Jesse Bates money. I said this yeah, is the Master Jesse Bates, Bates money. money. Master Jesse Bates money right there. Um, it's going to cost you quite a bit. I don't know if they're going to do that because we drafted Brian Branch, who is kind of replica of him. Would you sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson back if he balls out? I would like to, but... What I think is, and I I don't think the Lions have any intention of keeping him here for more than one year. And by that, I think there's a, I scratch your back, you scratch my back scenario here for Gardner Johnson. This is an opportunity for him on an emerging team to show out and go out and get a big ass payday next year. So he has incentive to come here and play well. At the same time, like you mentioned, we have drafted Brian Branch who is going to be learning off C.J. Gardner-Johnson all season and can be just as good as him in this league. So Gardner-Johnson is doing it for his future, and at the same time, he's helping our future. And this time in a year, when that big deal is going to kick in, and we probably can't afford it because we've got lots of other guys to look after, we have secured our future, he's secured his future. And by that way, we have both helped one another. I don't think there is a long-term plan to keep him here this seems very predicated and very deliberate but that's not a bad thing like i say it's good for the player it's good for us and that hopefully is the way it works out branch takes over next year cj goes and gets money and gets paid good question here from eric c hashtag fgb what player do you guys think will not make the 53 that you really like Ooh, that's a good question that i that a player whom i really like will not make the roster. <sighs> That's the thing is I really don't like one said player that I think is not going to make the roster. But if I'm going to go with one who I think has potential is Ifutu Melifanwu. I think he may not make the roster just because of the competition in the secondary. What do you got? Ah, see, you got me there. That's what I was going to go with as well. I, it's, I think it's going to be somewhere in that secondary where there are a lot of mouths um, to feed. I mean, if he would, I, I would hate it if, if he didn't get in. On the other side of the ball, I think if we're going, oh, I, I don't know. I think most of them make. I think it'll be in the running back room. Whoever doesn't make it out of Mohamed Ibrahim and Jamar Jefferson, I will be highly disappointed. Or if both don't make it, if Craig Reynolds does, I will be highly disappointed because I think they all have the stuff to be... I think running backs where I'm going to be most disappointed because I love the guys in there and I think they all can contribute and we can't keep them all. So it'll be iffy and then the running backs. Hashtag bald guys, what do you guys think about the new helmet with the black jerseys and blue numbers? So going old back to 2007, black jerseys with the helmet. I think that would be kind of fire. I think it would be, but it'd have to be the blue matching the helmet, not the the other blue. So it matching, and I, right now it looks like that Ant-Man agrees on that one. Anything that involves black jerseys gets my seal of approval. So whichever way you do it, you'll you'll get a yes from me. Just, just mention the black unis. I'm, I'm your guy. Liam Gotti says, I trust the mad scientist Brad Holmes. He will sign players that fit and draft the replacements for the players that chase the bag. What do you guys think? 110%. That is how you build a football team, folks. You draft the replacements. Thus, you're fiscally responsible. You're staying young, and the talent is always there. You have to draft to be a good team. If you suck in the draft, your team's going to suck, and that's why our team 
for many, many years has been underachieving. It's the lack and ability to find players, not just in the first round, but through all the rounds and is undrafted. And fortunately for us right now, Brad Holmes knows exactly what the hell he is doing. When is Gibbs going to sign his rookie contract? Who knows? Don't worry about it, though. They're on the rookie pay scale. You don't have to worry about that. I think the last one was Sam Bradford, right? With the, where before they they did the rookie deal there, so it'll happen before training camp. Don't worry about that. Mike R is alone. Who is the best linebacker for us this year? Ooh, I'll go with Alex Anzalone for the veteran side. I think he'll be, but uh, for the long haul, I think it'll be Jack Campbell. What do you got there, Ant Man? Uh, <laughs> that's really difficult um, because I don't think I think Campbell's going to take time to acclimatize, and you know, there's no problem with that. Linebacker is a very hard position to do in the NFL. Um, Alex is going to be Alex. Alex always has a ceiling. Alex is never going to mm-hmm. blow your socks off, but he's always going to be very reliant and very dependable. And then, of course, that brings you down to Rodrigo and Barnes. So. Malcolm, you know, is going to give you absolutely everything. But again, he, he has a, he will be a good linebacker in the NFL, but he has a ceiling on him. And you get through all that, and then it's like, Barnes is the guy who has the potential to be very special in terms of, you know, the ability to come off the edge, the ability to get sacks, tackles for loss, all that sort of stuff. He has something that these other guys don't. And if he carries on the way that he's training right now, he will have a really big year for us, and he will be the guy who stands out and be like, whoa, look at play he's just made there. So I think low-key it could be Barnes. And I hope so. I would love to see Derek Barnes come out and show out. We invested somewhat of what, a fourth-round pick in him two years ago, so I'd love to see Derek Barnes come out and make it a big-time improvement in his game. That would be absolutely awesome. William Chadwick, hashtag FGB, how much improvement do you think the defense makes? What areas improvement the most? The secondary, to me, is going to make a significant jump. I think it's going to be one of the best secondaries in the NFL. That's how big of a jump. I think the defense goes from bottom to top 16. A big jump there, resulting in the Lions winning the NFC North and being very dominant in the turnover game. What do you think about the Lions defense? What do you think improved the most? Well, it, you've said it there, Mike. The secondary is the one that's going to improve the most because the secondary, to borrow one of your phrases, has been complete cheeks for years yeah. now. It has not been good at all. I mean, even the linebackers have put up a fight in the last few years. So the secondary should be the one that makes the biggest jump. As for the defense, I've made it very clear. If Aaron Glenn cannot get this defense to middle of the road, 16th, that sort of area this season, he should be fired. And he should be fired very quickly because three years is enough. And if you're still in the 20s and you're still lumbering around after three years, you are not good at your job. And the amount of talent that he now has at his disposal is unacceptable for any less. So he needs to be middle of the pack and the secondary is going to make big improvements this year. Hashtag FGB, what is a sneaky game the Lions might lose this year? You know what? How about I go with the Raiders? As much as I think the Lions will roll on them, I could see a situation where we lose it because, for whatever reasons, it just happens. So I'll go with the Raiders game. What do you think? A sneaky game that we might lose. So obviously one we're expecting to win. Falcons at home. We have a very, every time we play the Falcons, it was one that removes the nails off your hand because you bite them all away. They're very close and you're expecting to beat a team like that. But they, outside of the quarterback, have had a really good offseason and one that I've really admired the way they're building that team. And if their quarterback, if Ritter can be half decent, that could be a team that surprises a lot of people and one that could upset us. Obviously, it's got to be, Devastating if they do, but I think that might be a sneaky trap game. Paul Ginder, hashtag smash that like button for Mike and Ant-Man. 110 in the building. Right now we got 122 with 59 likes. Let's get to 75 likes. 7-5. We're getting one step closer to the ultra combo, and we all love that ultra 
combo question here from Detroit Villains. A trade question. What do you think about trading for Isaiah Simmons and becoming more versatile at the linebacker position? I've heard this trade multiple times. Obviously, a lot of people wanted to get Isaiah Simmons during the draft. Instead, we got Akuda. I don't know what he would be at a trade. I really don't know. I know he's not fitting over there in Arizona. I don't know what it'd fetch. I have no idea what the comp would be. Do you have an idea what the comp would be if they're to trade for him? I think they'd try and rip you off for it because yeah. they're a rebuilding team who want picks. So, yeah. And it doesn't really matter to them if they can't get rid of him because he's still on that rookie deal. So I'm not sure. All I know is when I get asked about Isaiah Simmons, I can see the scowling face of Luke G looking at me going, don't you dare say you would get him that man. He would, yeah. he would despise me if I said that. So out of respect for Luke, no. No, I don't want him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what they would fetch for him, in all honesty. Dog Pound, hashtag Lions, do you think that not drafting Jalen Carter will haunt the Lions fans? I don't think so. I think they're looking for specific players. They're getting their specific players. They got Jameer Gibbs, who I think is going to be outstanding for Detroit. I, right now, Jameer Gibbs is blowing up OTAs in minicamp. I fully expect him to blow up training camp and fully expect him to blow up the NFL season. I think when people see his play... They'll forget about the Jalen Carter situation. What is your thoughts on this one, Amen? I don't think so, no. I mean, Jalen Carter would be the pick sort of if you want your DT room to be good now or sooner rather than later, then that's the kind of pick you make. But you see the picks Holmes has made since he started here. You know, Levi, second round pick, Aleem, third round pick, Roderick Martin, third round pick. The, you know, he's getting guys in who not necessarily going to be at the apex of the game right away, but long term sustainability at that position. They're going to take a little bit of time. And I, I, you know, I can buy that. We're stronger edge. You know, we've got some good vets in at DT at the minute, and, and they want guys who they can develop long term. Carter just feels like the guy you swing for if you want to win this year. And, and you know, we're building long term sustainability. So, no, I don't I don't think it will haunt us. And like you said with Gibbs, man, the guy's going to be so special. And I think we're going to forget about who was in the draft at the time we drafted. It's not going to be one of these who we could have had. You know, DK Metcalf instead of Jelani Tavai type things. It's we got Jameer Gibbs. We want Jameer Gibbs. We don't want anyone else from him around there. Hashtag FGB is Charles Harris or Julian O making the roster from nine drinks. Charles Harris making the roster. Julian Aquara I have not making the roster. Your thoughts on that one? Yeah, Julian's not making the roster. He's he he'll be gone. He's done year four. It. Other guys have come in and made more of an impact in much lesser space of time, and that's the standard now. He's, he's not reaching it. Charles will. Julian will not. Lions, will Ibrahim make the 53-man roster? Would love to see him on the team. I think he gets it over. I don't know if he makes the roster, but I think he would be above a Jason Cabinda, even though they like Jason Cabinda and Jamar Jefferson. I don't know if it makes the roster, though. It just depends. But I think right now he's above those guys. What do you think? Me, personally, I think Ibrahim is the perfect running back three on this roster. Agreed. Because, I say, when you are done sending Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery at a defense and they are tired, they're blowing, they need respite, and you're going to send an utter tank like him who can take carry after carry, hit after hit. This is a guy who just smashes people in the face, knocks them to the ground, and carries on running. That's the kind of guy you want to bring in when you've got a tired-ass defense. And he's something that the other two don't do. So you want as much versatility in your backfield as possible. I mean, I love Jamar, um, but, you know, Monty's kind of a superior version of what Jamar can be. And then with... With Reynolds, again, it's kind of, we've got these slippery guys out the backfield who can, we've got those guys. We don't have a Mo Ibrahim on this team. So that is why I think he should be running back three, really, because I want as much versatility in the room as possible. Hashtag FJB. Gibbs is going to ball out this year. I agree. Absolutely. I think he's going to ball out. I think he's going to be an integral part to this offense. And immediately, week one, we're going to find out versus the Kansas City Chiefs, 
and I think he does really well. His name's going to be blowing up after that Thursday night game. I think people are going to really start talking about this guy personally. I love what he's done so far. I think he's going to be really good for the Lions. Let's continue on.